All right. Well, since uh, we are uh, ready to begin, I'm going to ask, uh, thank you to everybody who answered that. Make sure that, that, that you do as you come in. Uh, but just to get us started, I am going to go ahead and ask Eric to, to close that poll and just so that we see the results that we have so far. So I'm, I, I think we had about, um, about 100 people who, who were able to answer the poll. And I believe you can see the results now. So the majority of, of everybody here with us for the group are, are residents. We have 9% are business owners, 14% uh, community leaders, 6% students, and 6% uh, city staff, and 11% uh, other. So thank you so much for being here and welcome. Um, we're gonna get started. So first of all, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Welcome, uh, my name is Alan Patterson. I am a consultant with CARP Strategies. Uh, one of the consulting firms that's working on the return to the Riverbend master plan. I'll be your main host this evening. Um, and now I'm just gonna give a very brief introduction in Spanish for those who wish to use the language interpretation option. Um, hola a todos, mi nombre es Alan Patterson de la empresa CARP Strategies. Esta junta tendrá la opción de escucharse con una traducción al español. Solo utiliza el botón de interpretación y elige el idioma. Escuchará el audio original al 20% de, de volumen y la traducción al 80% de volumen. Uh, okay, thank you. So before we begin, uh, uh, a few housekeeping items. Number one, um, this will be a two-part meeting. So the, the first part will involve a presentation. Uh, and during the second part, we're going to go into breakout rooms to hear from you. So please note that you should be muted during the presentation portion of the workshop. So I ask everybody to make sure that you have uh, the unmute selected in your screen as it appears here. Um, second, we encourage you to use the chat function at, to ask any questions during the presentation and over the course of the, of the workshop. We will try to answer as quickly as possible. Uh, there'll be a couple of opportunities during the presentation to, to review the questions from the chat. Uh, however, if we don't get to your questions today, uh, we'll do our best to respond by, by email after this meeting or to include your questions in the frequently asked questions section of the project's uh, website. Third, uh, we remind you that we're recording this meeting so that those who were not able to attend today can find the, the information. Um, and lastly, but most importantly, during our breakout discussion, please uh, be respectful of um, all participants and presenters. We really don't anticipate this, but any use of derogatory or foul language will result in the immediate removal from, from the meeting. Um, Thank you very much for that. So before we go into our main presentation, we're gonna hear a few words from Mayor Florshane. Mr. Mayor, uh, over to you. Uh, great, <laughs> thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, it's, it's great to be with you all. Happy New Year and I hope that everybody stayed warm today. Um, I'm going to be very brief at the beginning. I just want to say uh, it's great to see uh, over 100 people uh, and still climbing, it looks like, uh, attendees at the second community workshop for the Return to the River Bend project. Um, it's a follow-up um, to a meeting that we had a few months ago that uh, I imagine many folks might be returning and coming from that meeting. Um, uh, thank you for coming back. For those who have participated, for those who are here for the first time, um, welcome, and we're, we're really thrilled to have you. Um, we're, uh, the team that the city has put together is going to update you on the work that we've been doing since that meeting. Um, we've been having some really productive um, uh, meetings with uh, various riverfront stakeholders from neighborhoods uh, along River Road um, to downtown businesses to some of our uh, to, to the housing authority and you'll hear you'll hear more about some of the work that we've been doing um, following up that initial meeting um, you'll get to see a little bit of the um, initial thoughts um, put together by Cooper Robertson <laughs> Carpet Carpet strategy some of the research that they have been working on uh, try to show, show you a little bit of our analysis of the feedback that we got not just from that meeting but also the individual meetings that we've been having with the key stakeholders um, the feedback that we've gotten through surveys that we've been conducting in the community online and at our storefront um, in Main Street Market um, and and start to um, hopefully tonight shape 
uh, the next steps of this vision of this master plan. Um, and we are really, in, in my view, entering, I think, one of the most exciting parts of the master planning process and, and also the most challenging part, perhaps, of the master planning process. Um, exciting because we're going to start to really be able to see and visualize um, some of what we talked about at the initial meeting, some of what's been talked about for many, many years. Um, we're going to really start to be able to see that visualized um, with the specificity, with the research-backed um, uh, planning, uh, with, the, with the real professional level of, of attention um, that we are trying to give this project in order to make sure that it has the legs that it needs to move in the years ahead. Um, but the most challenging part is we are also going to discover where those roadblocks we weren't anticipating exist. Um, the, and, and we are going to have to make sure that we um, you know, overcome all of the obstacles. The biggest one, I think, is inertia. The biggest one is um, the, the, the sense that uh, the plan that we have made, that we make working together tonight and over the next several months um, is going to wind up being just like all the other plans that have been well made um, and, and well discussed um, and eventually uh, shelved for lack of funding, for lack of interest, for lack of um, for, for lack of a, a true community effort to make it happen. Um, we have solved too many of the big structural obstacles um, to redeveloping our riverfront to allow that to happen with this master plan. Um, and, and it is really the choice of the community and it is the decisions that we make as a community that will decide whether um, we're able to realize this vision or not. And so um, it's a really, really exciting time to, to be having this conversation because everything that we talk about tonight is going to be incorporated into that final vision, the vision that allows us to achieve what we want to achieve. Um, but we are also going to have to start grappling with, um, you know, the, the big questions of, of making sure that it does get done, of making sure that we are engaged with the right partners at the state level, at the local level, um, it, it, frankly, at the national level. Um, you know, it is, it is our great privilege and our great fortune to have this amazing riverfront and an amazing team in Cooper Robertson and CARP Strategies that um, is going to bring that level of national interest in Middletown's riverfront. Um, and we need to make sure that that interest is realized and we need to make sure that it is realized not for um, anybody's benefit, that, but, but for the benefit of the city of Middletown. That's why having this visioning process be um, at, the, at the local level for a, what, what should be a national asset um, is, is so, so important. So um, thank you to everybody for taking the time to, to do this hard work together with us. Um, I, I'm, I'm, again, really proud of the team that we've assembled and, and really proud to be part of this community that is taking this project and its, and its future so seriously. So thank you for being on the journey with all of us. Um, and thanks for tuning in tonight. Looking forward to sharing with you and, and most importantly, hearing from you. So Alan, uh, back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just want to echo uh, and, and thank everybody for, for their time and, and showing up. It's really important and we're very really happy to, to have you here. Um, so now to move on, uh, Mike Deceives and Angeli Pata from Cooper Robertson, the lead consulting firm together with Ali Sutherland Brown from CARP Strategies, will present the results from the market analysis, uh, the design framework and the design concepts for the riverfront. So over to you, Mike. <clears throat> thank you, Alan, and thank you, Mayor, uh, for those remarks. I think it really does a great job of setting the stage for what we're uh, here to discuss tonight. Um, my name is Mike Aziz. Uh, I'm an architect and partner with Cooper Robertson. We are the master planning firm working with the city on this initiative. Uh, on behalf of my whole team, uh, we want to express our gratitude to everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, thank our partners at the city and in the community for helping get the word out. Uh, so we have such great attendance. Uh, we're very excited to spend the next two hours with you. Um, here is uh, the run of show for tonight. I'll begin with a brief introduction, review what we've learned since our last workshop, share some preliminary design concepts, and then head to breakout rooms to get feedback on those concepts. And then finally, we'll reconvene to discuss uh, takeaways from those breakout rooms. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce our team, uh, starting with Cooper Robertson. We are the city's lead consultant. Uh, we were selected through a competitive process earlier last summer. We're an architecture and planning firm with over four decades of experience uh, leading waterfront community planning, just like this. We are joined by two fabulous consultants, CARP Strategies and Langen Engineering. CARP Strategies is a mission-based consulting firm that, folk, that specializes in economic development and public engagement. Langen is a Connecticut-based engineering firm 
with deep local knowledge and expertise around everything from environmental planning to transportation design, and both are in attendance tonight. So for those of you who did not attend our last workshop or may be unfamiliar with what this project is, we'll do a quick overview here. Simply stated, uh, what we are here to do is develop a master plan for the future of Middletown's riverfront. This means developing a physical framework for the riverfront that reflects the needs and wants of the community, lays the groundwork for future public investment, and helps attract the right kind of development. The master plan will be illustrative and graphic in nature. You'll see some of those preliminary graphics soon. Uh, in other words, it's a vision document and not a set of plans for construction. These are initial ideas um, that re will reflect the community's interest and desires. And it, it will, in the end, fit more like a mitten than a glove. That's the nature of a master plan. It has that built-in flexibility. Where there will be more specificity is around identifying locations for specific land uses, like park space or community facilities or private development. Those are the types of things that we'll carry forward in our process. And so a few words about that process. The master plan itself is set to wrap up in the spring of 2020. Um, in the initial phase of it, we underwent fact-finding, goal-setting, and most importantly, developed a vision along with you, the community. Uh, that really started at our last workshop in October and continued through our stakeholder engagement. The project vision includes guiding principles and programmatic goals, um, and we are translating those into concepts that we are testing and sharing with you tonight. Those concepts will be brought forward into a final phase we're calling preferred plan, where we will further refine that physical framework and summarize it in a series of final documents, and then define a regulatory and development path forward, which will include recommendations for zoning actions, public investment programs, developer solicitations. As the mayor said, th this is where the, the work really focuses on making sure it gets done, um, which is what will happen in the kind of in the second phase, what we're calling implementation that begins in the summer of 2022 and carries on through the fall, where the necessary legislative actions that would be needed to enable this plan will begin to, to take shape. So that's the kind of process you can see where we are. We're just past the midpoint in in the first section, the master planning section. So a bit about what we've heard and what we've learned. Here are the results from the first community workshop in October, combined with feedback we continue to receive and collect through the storefront gallery that we have on Main Street and through online submissions. We asked folks to rank their most desired land uses around three categories. Parks and recreation space was the highest ranked land use of the three. Included at the top of that category were walking and biking trails, nature parks, a public riverfront promenade, followed closely by boating and maritime uses. So all of those you'll see in our design concepts. A, perform a new performing arts and cultural center was actually the number one highest voted program, uh, then followed by fresh food, retail and restaurant spaces for the working and shopping category. In terms of places to live, we completely agree with the respondents. There are places in this area that are absolutely not appropriate to build housing, like directly on the shoreline where it's pr prone to flooding and better reserved for public uses. But, many, but as many of you identify, there are places in our larger study area where it is appropriate for housing and there are great opportunities to address the city's needs in both market rate and affordable. For those areas, uh, the community suggested apartments and townhomes were the most appropriate type of housing use. So you'll see some of those reflected. In addition to the survey results that you see summarized here, we have conducted dozens of one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus group meetings, bringing our total number of engaged community members 
to nearly 500, and we think that's a great success, being that we're just at the midpoint of this process. And, and so what you see tonight will be a real reflection of all of those thoughts, uh, conversations, and interactions. So now I'd like to hand it over to Ali from CARP Strategies to walk us through some of the findings on our market analysis. Thanks so much, Mike. Um, so as, as Mike said, as part of our analysis, we looked at the markets, at data from the housing, retail, industrial, and office sectors, and spoke to relevant stakeholders there to provide our planning efforts with a good understanding of where these sectors are today and where we expect things to move in the coming years. So starting with the housing market, um, this is going to be strongly influenced by the projected increase in population and changes in population composition. Between now and 2040, the state expects thousands more households in Middletown and more specifically, an increase in the number of older households. To accommodate this population change, we propose to build around a thousand new units over the next 15 to 20 years, including increasing the number of affordable units on the market. The retail industry. Restaurants, as I'm sure most people here know, are a huge draw to Middletown with dollars flowing in from outside the center city. The city is actually also quite well provisioned with different types of retail, but there are gaps um, that may be filled at the waterfront, namely a small to medium sized specialty food or grocery store, sporting goods, home goods, and or clothing and accessories stores. Um, we especially think it will be a natural fit to match retail to recreational uses. So, for example, pairing an appropriate scale sporting goods store with a boat rental or other facility that will complement other uses um, at the waterfront. In the industrial market, we see there's significant market growth in logistics and distribution, growth in specialty sectors that require flex space, which is a mix of office, warehouse, and production facilities under one roof. And there's demand for smaller local industrial and commercial spaces that is unmet currently by the space at Remington Rand in the North End. So logistics and distribution likely won't be feasible at the waterfront, but we do see an option of allowing specialized flex buildings for growing sectors that could include a small business incubator to foster innovation and entrepreneurship. And finally, the office market, which um, has changed significantly since the pandemic and likely uh, no surprise to anybody here, we've observed an increase in both vacancies and decreased demand for all types of office space. So at this point, it's hard to gauge uh, future demand for office. So we recommend reassessing the market at a future date um, and ensure that when new zoning is written, following this master planning process, it can accommodate a flexibility of uses. I think, Mike, back to you. Thank you, Ali. Uh, so a final slide here before we take a look at the designs. These four planning influences are the primary drivers behind our, our preliminary design concepts. Each is related to one another and they all must work together at the end of the day. So in no particular order, they are what we've heard from you, the community, in both our large and small settings. Uh, the city's commitment to equity and inclusion in all forms environmental conditions of the study area today, including site topography, infrastructure, flood risk, et cetera, and financial feasibility, ensuring that what is proposed is financially viable and achievable. Uh, so with, with those in mind as a kind of planning lens, uh, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Anjali Polta, <clears throat> to walk us through the design. Hi, everyone. Um, and thank you, Mike. So let's jump right into the design concepts. We're going to start on the next slide by orienting ourselves to the study area, which is highlighted by the orange line and the extended study area highlighted by the blue line. This area encompasses, starting from the right, the more urban downtown Main Street and Harbor Park to the low-lying Sumner Creek area, which is the location of OMO and the wastewater treatment plant, up to the CVH campus and over to the sloping open space area next to the Rushford Center, um, which is the former home of the Long River Village housing development, which some folks on the call might be familiar with. So in our analysis phase of work, we studied both the unique geography and the land uses in the study area, 
And this combined with key upland street connections and green corridors created four distinct planning districts, including the Riverside, Sumner Creek, South End, and Hilltop districts. And we have organized the presentation in the following slides using these four districts. So as we walk through the following slides, if you have questions, put them in the chat, like Alan mentioned at the, at the beginning of this meeting, and we'll try and pause for one to two minutes to answer questions um, after each district is presented. So the first district that we're gonna go through is the Riverside District. It's the location of Route 9 and downtown. This district has an incredible opportunity to transform its parking lots, which total 70% of the district's area, into something that can really complement the existing vibrancy of downtown and Main Street while improving the pedestrian experience. There's also a need to create better connections within the downtown and to the north end. And additionally, connections to Harbor Park are not sufficient and the park itself needs some improvement. So with that, let's look at some initial design concepts that, that begin to address some of these considerations. And just so you guys know, you'll have another opportunity for a kind of recap of these concepts in the breakout room. So apologies, I'm gonna go quite, kind of quickly, but you'll hear all of this again. So here in the downtown, we are showing three zones of new development, starting from the far left, from Sumner Creek to Union Street, an expanded YMCA and recreational fields, in the middle from Union to Court Street, a higher density mixed use area, which includes a relocated municipal building, new grocery store and mixed income housing. A historic Center Street walk is shown between Court and Dingwall Drive, which could exhibit historic information on the impacts of Route 9 and urban renewal in this area more generally. On the far right between Court and Washington Street is an arts and cultural block, which includes an, impro an improved MAT stop, a new arts and cultural center, again, that highly ranked program that Mike talked about earlier, and a mixed use building with a youth center on the ground floor. Two new municipal garages are shown here, one along Union Street and the other along Dingwall Drive. These garages could potentially help meet parking needs for both downtown as well as for proposed riverfront amenities and destinations in the near and long term future. So moving across Route 9 to Harbor Park, ideas for the park include the Union Street Gateway, a new green entrance to the riverfront. As the primary vehicular entry to the riverfront, we feel that the gateway really offers an opportunity to prominently celebrate Wangung history with a dedicated plaza or large scale public art piece. Um, for reference, the Wangungs are the indigenous people of central Connecticut, part of the Algonquin nation, um, who are the original riverfront dwellers. We've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with the tribal elder and Wangung scholars who have really helped us understand the importance of Wangung history in this area and how, how we can really honor that history in this plan. So moving to the right from that gateway is a new boathouse and boathouse plaza, improved boat launch area and a programmed river bend promenade. The promenade could run along the shoreline of the entire project area, um, improved Natural and green landscapes are shown as well throughout Harbor Park and would include places for walking, fishing, feeding, and gathering. Native and flood tolerant plants could also be included in these open space areas. Um, and lastly, a slave trade memorial is shown prominently in the center of the park, um, you know, really building on the need to include underrepresented histories and stories as a part of this plan. So now I'd like to take a moment to talk about Route 9. We've been working in coordination with DOT to explore concepts for the future of Route 9. We hope that in our conversations today, we can get a little bit closer to what the community wants for the future of this piece of uh, highway. So the city can really take that and advocate for a unified vision for Route 9 with DOT moving forward. So in the first concept shown here on the screen, Route 9 is reconfigured and turned into a green pedestrian oriented boulevard. 
traffic stops to allow pedestrians to safely cross at three key signalized intersections. So those intersections are at Dingwall College and Washington Street. With the slowing of traffic and the improved pedestrian experience along Route 9, we think this option could really provide an opportunity to transform DeCoven Drive into an active mixed use street with new ground floor retail and restaurants facing the river. So in the second option, Route 9 continues to be a highway, but pedestrian overpasses are constructed over Route 9 to Harbor Park. Bridges are shown at Washington Street and mid block between Court and Dingwall Drive. These bridges would be like more like elevated parks that really extend the experience of Harbor Park into downtown. Again, they would be kind of like park spaces, generous in size. They might provide space for public art, overlooks, and places to gather and sit or take a rest. In both options, the existing Harbor Park tunnel is widened and shown as connecting to a new park, which is framed by the cultural facility retail news center that we showed on the, on the first slide for this district. Anju, I, I see a, a few questions in the in the chat, uh, but in okay. the interest of time, since we're we're running a few minutes behind, I think we can go forward to the next next district, and and we could have those questions answered in the breakout rooms. Sounds good. So let's jump to the Sumner Creek District, which is a former industrial center of the city. It's an area with no public shoreline access or public uses today. However, with the decommissioning of the wastewater treatment plant, a significant piece of shoreline has been given back to the public and has really unlocked the entire riverfront for comprehensive development. So with this, the district, we believe, can become more of an expansion of Harbor Park, be more engaged with the river, and be a cleaner, more resilient part of the city. Design concepts for this district include a new River Bend Park, which is shown here, that is comprised of the wastewater treatment plant and OMO sites on either side of an improved river road. Here, the wastewater treatment plant is converted to retail and restaurants. A new transit stop and bike rental station could be located across from the former plant. The transit stop could be along um, a sort of larger bus and bike loop that could take residents and visitors along the riverfront and could connect to downtown and the north end. Framing either side of the wastewater treatment plant is a public boat, public boat launch and docking area. And then on the other side, an event lawn is shown that could host large community gatherings. A cross river road um, in the OMO area is a nature park with access to Sumner Creek and a wild unstructured playground area is also proposed. In addition, there is a four season rec facility and a municipal parking garage shown that could include commercial uses as well. Lastly, uh, rooftop amenities could also be considered in this area to take advantage of panoramic views to the river. We've um, been speaking to the property owners of OMO and they are in support of these initial concepts. So moving to the former Jackson site, a new mixed income housing development is shown as well as a new location for Meadow Meat. Again, we've met with the owners of Meadow Meat and they are in support of these preliminary ideas. Um, existing wetlands here are shown with new walking paths which are connected to um, a new, this new housing community as is a riverfront overlook at the end of Eastern Drive. Each of these kind of open space areas uh, could be named after the important Wangung Seicham Sohae, who is thought to have resided in this area. So moving to the Hilltop District, which holds half of CVH cam CVH's campus today, is largely inaccessible to the public apart from public events like, like 4th of July fireworks, um, but we think there's a major opportunity here to work with the state to figure out how their campus can better open to the public and serve the Middletown community. We've had two conversations with CVH leadership and one with state representatives about how this might happen. And the next slide shows some of the things that have been discussed thus far. The first is how can we begin to bridge the divide between CDH and the community through potentially shared landscapes, public access, 
community programming. We've also discussed how the city might better align with CDH's long-term goals and plan projects to explore development opportunities that again can benefit both CDH and the Middletown community. Currently, Smith Home, Weeks, and Noble Hall, which are kind of highlighted in the purple on the right, um, are not being used by CDH, and we think that there might be a possibility to invest in these buildings for future programming. And this is sort of one idea of many we'll continue to explore with CDH moving forward. Okay, so the last district we'll go through, the fourth district is the South End. Um, it's owned by the Housing Authority and already connected to the city. Um, so this in, the infrastructure of this uh, site provides a major opportunity for meeting the city's housing needs and could provide a potential bookend to Harbor Park. We've had discussions with the Housing Authority who are in support of the concepts we're about to show you on the following slides. So, um, a new affordable mixed income housing community is shown here. It includes both mid-rise apartments and townhomes. Housing is shown framing community gardens, which could provide fresh food to residents. A Long, a Long River Village Memorial could be incorporated into this new development um, to reflect the history of the residents who used to live on this site as well. Harris Green Space connects this new housing community to the riverfront and the existing well fields. Here, the well fields and surrounding green areas are redesigned as a stormwater demonstration education park fit with outdoor classrooms. A uh, public boat launch is also included at the end of Silver Street. And here's a view of all of those concepts together for the South End. So that is our, our last slide um, for the four districts. Um, this is a, a 3D slide showing kind of all of those districts together in our entirety of our study area. Um, and now that you've seen these initial design concepts, um, again, these are not final designs or plans, but uh, rather a um, basis to begin discussions to solicit your thoughts and feedback, um, which we're going to do next. And I'll hand it over to Alan to explain the next part of this agenda. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, I will just share. Uh, a few agreements before we start. All right, yeah, so um, thank you so much, Andrew, for the, for the presentation. Thank you, Mike and, and, and Ali. Um, now we're all gonna go into breakout rooms to hear your reactions and have an in-depth conversation of, of the design concepts uh, we, we were just presented with. Uh, please know that in case uh, the group wants to, we'll have another opportunity to go over the design uh, concepts and, and all the districts during the breakout rooms. So after 45 minutes, we'll reconvene here in the main room and we'll, we'll report on what we, on what we discussed during the breakout room. Um, we want to remind you that all of the, that, that during the breakout room, we, we really welcome your active participation and that sharing your idea your ideas is highly, highly encouraged. Um, so as you do so, we also kindly ask you that you keep the following community agreements in mind uh, so we can all participate fully and respectfully. Uh, first, all ideas are welcome. Uh, share ideas in the way that you feel comfortable. Uh, one speaker at a time, please. Uh, let's have uh, one conversation uh, at a time. Uh, please critique ideas, not people. And the conversation will be uh, anonymous, but, but not confidential. Uh, and if you or any others would like to add something, please, uh, if, if you wanna add another community agreement, please type it in the, in the chat and we can add that to our list. And I'll just take a look at the, at the chat. But, but if not, um, all right, I think I uh, wanna ask Jorge, uh, my colleague, if we're ready to go with uh, breakout rooms. Uh, okay, if you can just uh, give me a thumbs up or say we're ready, we will uh, launch those and um, you will see a pop-up box appearing on your screen where we will just select join 
And once you join, you're gonna go into your breakout room. We are ready. Amazing, all right. All right, so there we go. Great conversations, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I, um, I'm sure that, that we have, that we could have stayed in that conversation uh, much, much longer. So, uh, but I know that, that everybody also wants to um, take advantage of their evening. So let's, let's wrap things up. Uh, I hope that you know, we have everybody back in, in the main room. Um, so I, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to hear what happened uh, in each of the rooms. So we, we're going to have, um, if you had the chance to, to pick up a volunteer for each of your groups, uh, it would be wonderful and they, if they can step in. I am going to show the, show the, the mirror boards for each room. So just give me one second so that I find them. And just while Alan is pulling that up, um, uh, we have a couple of questions both from our breakout room and then I see Brenda in the chat of saying will these group discussions and tonight's full presentation be available online later. Can I get somebody from the Cooper Robertson or city team to answer that question? Um, yeah, the, the presentation absolutely will. We are recording this uh, main room and, and that could be made available. Uh, were the breakout rooms, uh, do we have the ability to share those as well, if we we will attempt to, I guess is what I'll what I'll say if we if we have all of those recorded, but certainly the the main room and the overall presentation can. And uh, in addition, I'll just put a plug in while Alan's teeing this up. Our Main Street Gallery, which is right next to Perk on Main, um, it, we will have these materials there physically for you soon as well. So you can come and spend more time with them and leave us feedback there. So there'll be there'll be a lot more opportunities to weigh in on this uh, past tonight. And Tina's asking how we get access to the presentation. I believe it'll be um, through the city's website. Exactly, the city's um, which website. Which is up here. Yeah. Yep. And there Perfect. is a pro project email you could always find us on too. Wonderful. So let's uh, begin our, our reporting now. So for breakout room one, do we have a volunteer who wants to uh, take five minutes to recap the, the main ideas that were discussed in, in the room? If you want to, you could go district by district, uh, or it, you, can, it, you can ask me to move the mirror board to go around notes and we can go through them together. So breakout room one didn't have a volunteer, so I'll be taking that role. Um, let's go district by district. We got a lot of great questions and a lot of amazing comments. Um, so for the Riverside district, um, there was interest in the reduction of parking lots and increase of usable space. And we seem to get a lot of favor for that. Um, we had a comment about uh, having including aspects of the rain garden in the downtown area, which we sort of satisfy with the green roofs. And then there's also favor for the promenade. Um, in terms of what could be improved, access points and entrance points to the boathouse and concerns about user access for all groups of so cars, pedestrians, etc. cetera. Um, then there's also a great question about debris no, near the Native American memorial site. Um, and then there, um, there are several people that expressed interest in more public restrooms. And we also had a great question about handicap accessibility um, and um, interest in including that into our development. So on to the route nine part. So Joan, 
mentions that she proposed an alternative plan um, to the city, and we are going to check that out. Um, there's also concerns about the Route 17 drop-off into Route 9. It's rated as one of the most dangerous on-ramps slash intersections in the state. state. Um, and that's the important thing to improve the safety of in our plan. Um, and then we did a quick overview of um, like who prefers the bridge option above the boulevard. We had a lot of votes for the bridge option, but we still did have a few votes for the boulevard. Um, I have all of those votes in um, the chat, so I'll, I'll look over those a little bit more in depth later. And then for the Sumner Creek District, um, we saw a lot of support for the lawn concept. Um, then we had mixed views about boat launches, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I'll discuss that a little bit uh, in the next district. Then what could be improved? There's concerns about the connection between the municipal uh, garage and the amphitheater and making sure that that's a comfortable walk to do. Um, I think it was Scott mentioned a need for luxury high-end rentals in the area and that um, he sees that as a demand, as a realtor. And then um, there's a lot of interest in public transit, which we started to hear as we discussed rail and the rail concept. Um, and then someone mentioned that they were in support of the commuter rail um, and how that will set Middletown up for future possibilities with multi multimodal transportation systems. And then if we go on to the Hilltop District, um, we heard about how there's interest in um, feeling comfortable walking and making sure that the pedestrian pathways in the area are comfortable. Um, there's a great comment and a lot of support towards planting more trees. Um, and that ties into making walking around the area in the Hilltop District a little bit more comfortable because um, tree coverage will create more shade, which is important in the summer. Um, and then there's concern and interest in whether the buildings were going to be reconstructed um, because a lot of them are dilapidated um, or if they are just going to be renovated. And Anju um, mentioned that that's still something that is being discussed. And then um, there's a great idea that this area would be great for a park or a display center. Um, and then in terms of improving walkability and bikeability, widening streets, especially Elizabeth streets for bikes and walkways would be a great idea. And now if we go into the South End District, um, so someone mentioned in the chat that the community garden space seemed a little small for such a high density area. So maybe um, increasing the size of that and then, um, oh, yeah, this is when we started to hear a little bit more about the boat launches because we have that in this district. Um, so there's concern about the amount of boat launches, but we also saw people in the, the breakout room in favor of the boat launches um, because they attract visitors. Um, and then the nearest boat launch is like the nearest existing boat launches, um, a little bit of a trek. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Alana. Okay, moving on to uh, breakout room number two. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit slow in moving the mirror board. It's just that my computer is giving me a little bit of trouble, but I'll try to keep up with you. If, um... Right, and um, I volunteered to speak for breakout room two. Um, with the Riverside District, uh, we're concerned about um, how we're gonna access the riverfront um, with the traffic on nine. I, I wouldn't try to cross it now, I can't imagine. Um, we're concerned about the municipal parking. Um, also some concerns about um, existing businesses and how we jump over to, to our newer uh, proposed plan. Um, how that affects the existing businesses there. 
Um, was there something else in this? Oh, boathouses. Um, so we've got one for the college and one for the high school. And can there be another one for, there's a central um, Connecticut rowing club. Um, could that be included as well? Um, uh, Riverside, um, is this the next district? Let me see. Uh, okay, Boulevard. Yeah, just the concerns of how we're rooting Route 9 and um, people walking. Uh, the next district, um, Sumner Creek. Uh, we talked about it being um, something that um, multi-generational use. So um, if grandmothers and grandfathers want to go and sit or young couples or kids, there's something for everybody there. There are spaces for everybody. Uh, we talked about um, winter use and fire pits and um, skating rink. We talked about impact on the environment, um, using it as um, a wonderful classroom opportunity. Um, and then we get the kids also wanting to preserve the space um, because we know all about it and how to um, work with the wetland cooperatively. Um, and studying more of the environmental impact. Um, there are a lot of animals um, in that wetland. Um, and what's the next one? Um, the Hilltop District. Um, what would that be used for? Um, I know um, from experience, it's a great place to watch um, the, the fireworks of 4th of July. I don't know that it gets any other use. Um, so exploring what we would use that for potentially. Um, and then South End, oh, uh, lots of places to put in small, smaller boats, um, the kayak rentals, um, stand up paddleboard or something along those lines. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, what else you guys oh and the use of the railroad tracks that run through there again uh, is it going to be a light rail some sort of um commuting opportunity um connecting middletown to hartford um could it be bike trails could it be um some sort of recreational activity trails that you could um pick up and do while you're there um I'm sure I missed something group two. I apologize, but I tried. No, that's great. That was, a, that was a wonderful recap, yeah. That's it. Okay, we can move on. Thank you so much. We can move up to uh, room three. And I know that we ran out of time and we couldn't select uh, a volunteer, but I'm gonna ask our note taker, Carlos, to walk us uh, through what the, the main themes that, that came in our conversation. Yeah. And um, if anyone wants to chime in from our group, feel free. Uh, but um, yeah, just to recap some of what we talked about for the for the Riverside District, um, it seems like there was a, a positive response about the Arts and Cultural Center and sort of that block of um, of uh, like cultural space. Um, there are a few comments about um, about uh, people appreciating the. Uh, that they'll be, uh, or that parking won't be taking up so much uh, space. Um, but uh, there are still some questions about, um, you know, how the municipal parking lots will uh, fit in with the uh, with the district and um, making sure that the locations of them work well. Um, there's also a proposal for perhaps um, putting some of the parking garages underground to make even more space for other uses. Um, in terms of what could be improved for the Riverside District, there's a, a good question about how the scale of the development matches uh, with the scale of downtown um, to make sure that, um, uh, that the new, new development is connecting to what exists there. Um, and then we also talked about um, some of the um, issues of pedestrian access from uh, from Main Street to the riverfront, um, 
considering uh, the proposals for, for what to do for, for Route 9. Um, so uh, on that note, uh, it seemed like uh, that there was really a, a mix of ideas about, about what to do here. Some people were um, a bit hesitant about um, turning Route 9 into a boulevard. Other people appreciated the idea, but wondered about its feasibility. Um, it seemed like uh, uh, some people were interested in, in the bridge idea, um, uh, but um, something that I don't think was mentioned yet was the potential of uh, lowering the grade of, um, uh, of Route 9 uh, and to try to collaborate with uh, DOT to, to see if that's feasible um, as a way to, to help manage uh, noise and nuisance levels from, uh, from Route, uh, Route 9. Um, so I guess uh, moving forward to Sumner Creek, uh, this uh, the the renderings here um, had a had a pretty positive response. It seemed like people appreciated the balance of um, of outdoor space, open space, recreation space with uh, with buildings, um, and were interested in uh, in um, understanding how. Um, uh, I guess, like understanding things like the development process around this, if any homes would be affected, um, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and there was also a brief discussion about um, about the parking lot that was detected there. If it was wise to to um, to keep that there so close to the river. Uh, and in terms of the the rail. Um, People were, were interested in the possibilities that it could become a commuter line to connect to Hartford, um, but there were questions about, about demand um, and whether uh, it, would, uh, uh, it could be feasible. Um, uh, but nonetheless, the opportunity to make those connections was, was enticing. Uh, for the Hilltop District, um, I would say to be brief, there was some discussion about um, taking advantage of some of the assets that exist there um, and to um, make better use of them. Um, and just to move on quickly to the South End District, um, we had a, a discussion about um, uh, about the housing itself. Um, uh, people noted that it would be super critical, like if housing is there, that it's well connected to um, other parts of, of Middletown by a, um, by a transit and that the housing itself is, is mixed in income. Um, but, you know, people were wondering if um, like this area as the area furthest away from downtown would be, uh, would be uh, most ideal. Uh, and I guess lastly, uh, someone raised an interesting question about uh, potentially leasing some of the, um, the community garden spaces to individuals to use. So with that, I'll pass it on to the, the next group. Thank you so much, Carlos. Great recap. Um, we'll pass it on to room four. Um, hello, I was a facilitator for group four um, and I don't know if I volunteered, but I'm here. Um, <laughs> So um, in the Riverside District, uh, folks really liked the, um, the grocery cited where it was um, in general. Uh, also universally agreed upon the bridge for Route 9 um, in terms of safety concerns, um, in terms of traffic flow, and even a, a great opportunity to create you know, great views to the, to the river. Um, there were concerns um, about with the parking being consolidated, like, is there still going to be enough? And a specific question about how many parking spaces are um, uh, proposed throughout um, this whole plan. And then I think a, a comment that, that ran through all four districts is ensuring connection to the other districts as well. Um, you know, in, in all different ways and including access via public transit um, and for people who may be differently abled. Um, when we go to the Sumner Creek District, um, 
someone liked uh, the siting of the amphitheater and the restaurants, I would actually say that, that the most concerns were raised in this district. Um, you know, just questions about, um, you know, how did how did housing end up close to the riverfront um, after the community workshop last time? Um, questions about where the nature park was sited um, in relation to what may be a brownfield site. Um, a, th a thought about the importance of having a grocery store um, more centrally located between the four different districts to serve all of these new residents. And then a sense here of people sort of being almost pushed to the side um, of where the housing was sort of far away from downtown. Um, something that came up here too, especially in regard to connectivity was a general desire for connection, um, including sort of a way to efficiently get from one place to the other as these new amenities and retail, things like that are created. And also obviously a need to, to um, sort of maintain a sort of um, leisurely recreational flow between the different districts. With the hilltop, everybody agreed that it was underutilized um, with open space ideas, including, you know, amplifying existing natural resources, creating a dog park or a good place to walk your dog, um, or a nature center with some kind of educational component. Um, someone, someone mentioned the sense that there is um, it doesn't feel safe up here right now, um, I think, because it's so underutilized. So just bringing that back um, from the first workshop. And finally, to the South End, I think this is the district people were most positive about. Um, they really like these ideas. Um, uh, uh, with the idea of the outdoor classroom, um, a question about could that be actually a model that's repeated in the other districts, um, especially closer to the youth center that's presented in Riverside. Um, and uh, we ended on a conversation about creatively integrating parking and retail. This was something we talked about in Riverside as well. You know, how much can we use sort of underground, above ground and create these, uh, you know, creatively mixed use places. Thank you so much, Ali. Uh, all right, we'll be moving to room five. So we're happy to hear from our volunteer to talk I mean, we have a volunteer. We have a volunteer. Eamon said he was taking notes, so that gives him a, a, an advantage. So, Wonderful. Eamon, <laughs> why don't you plunge in? An advantage or a disadvantage? I'm not sure which, <laughs> but we'll we'll see. Um, good, good good evening, everyone. Um, in, in terms, uh, so Group Five had a great conversation, um, specifically about the Riverside District. Uh, the group liked the decreased parking sprawl that um, resulted in all the parking. Uh, lots going away here and, and um, replaced by various buildings. Um, the group consensus seemed to be that changing Route 9 in a really meaningful way might be a, uh, a non-starter in terms of the state. Uh, one person said that there's no way to stop traffic here. The rest of the state would go bananas. Um, <laughs> is it was the I wrote down that quote. Um, instead, the group was more optimistic about using promenades and bridges to get over Route 9 to reconnect um, that uh, Riverside District to the, 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 the riverfront there. Um, there was some question about what would draw people to this area on a consistent basis. Um, there was also concern about, even though this area looks good for uh, summer use and, and great weather use, what do we do to attract people to this area in the winter when uh, it's obviously much colder, and especially with the wind kind of coming off the river? Um, one person questioned why one of the parking garages seemed to have a somewhat of a prime location that had a, a view of the river and um, asked whether some of the parking could be moved underground or maybe kind of tucked away the way that one of the other garages was more tucked away. Um, and the need for boat launches in this area was, was, was mentioned with the Lady Catherine being an example of uh, something that could possibly bring visitors to Middletown and, and, and in a way that a lot of Middletown residents can take advantage of the river. Um, the group touched on the need for versatile indoor spaces um, to um, number one, attract people, Middletown residents the area year round and also to um, make sure that there's you know, something for people to do when it's cold. Like for example, today, um, a lot of people on this call might know that 
the public schools had a two hour delay because it was so cold in the morning. A lot of these outdoor green spaces look great for summer, but they might not be as, as conducive for a variety of activities for Middletown residents in, in a, on a year round basis. Um, the, 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 there was talk of whether the arts and cultural center pictured on the map in this area could be a library. Um, there's reference made to the Westport Library that has a 400 seat forum seating capacity um, and how a library could possibly bring people to the area uh, on a year round basis and uh, you know, regardless of weather and, and kind of drive traffic to the area. Um, looking at the Sumner Creek area, uh, the group noted possible environmental remediation issues in the area and also concerned that um, the floods that come to this area um, would be accounted for in the planning. Also noted was the public transit stop uh, in, in this area and the need for public transportation around the area to alleviate parking concerns. Um, the amphitheater seemed to be a um, uh, a hit with the with the crowd as well as the the uh, the, the, the boat access generally. Um, moving to the hilltop district, uh, the, the group had a number of different ideas in in well a number of different ideas, but also noted the difficulty of saying exactly what can be done with this area in in light of the fact that um, we would kind of have to know what the state wanted to do or was willing to part with before the group gave a more firm opinion on what, um, what could be done, but possibly an open space, possibly a community picnic area there, possibly jogging trails. Um, almost everyone who spoke noted how great the, the views were from this area and also how great the view of this area is from other areas. Um, how do we take advantage of those sight lines in this area and you know, what exactly would the state be willing to um, to 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 uh, provide. Also, even uh, I, I thought that the the comment that we got about agricultural use here, uh, I know that that we on the team have talked about the south end of the riverfront as being a place where that kind of use could happen. We've talked about it in connection with the south end itself, more community gardens integrated with the housing. But but I thought the the comment about CDH being able to support larger scale community gardens and agricultural uses was interesting just, just because it seemed like something that could be done with a, in a partnership with the, with his, with the CVH clients, residents. Yes, I, 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 I did. Yes. There was some discussion of, 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 of public farming. I had it under the South end area of my, yeah. uh, of, yeah. of, of, of my notes here, because that's, that's where we see it, you know, here with the community gardens, but, but yes, there's a, a number of different ways that that area could be used, but of course, subject to what the state, says, yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which is a, you know, a question. Um, then lastly, with the South End, we did um, talk about the, the community farming, as, as Donald mentioned. Um, this area, you know, seemed to, to be the, uh, the access to the river in a more green sense. Uh, there was discussion of, um, instead of having a kind of like a boat launch that we saw further down, that this area might be something where there could be kayaks or paddle boards stored and, you know, have a public storage area for that and use of it in this area. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, of course, subject to the same limitation that we have a lot of outdoor areas that have to remain green here. But the question is, you know, how, how exactly does that, you know, how is that used in, in the winter? Um, with regards to the, um, to, to, to the to residential areas, um, the, the, the group, I think, you know, generally was in favor of, of, of the, of, 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 of the residential, you know, area being up away from the uh, potential flood area. Um, and that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Iman. Thank you for, for a great recap. Uh, moving on to our last group. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Kellen Atherton. I'm a planning and zoning commissioner. I'm a trustee on the board of the Russell Library, and I'm also a father of three here in town, uh, speaking for group six. Starting with what works well, uh, the promenade certainly, um, and for the overall project, the fact that the promenade, less than misunderstanding the interconnected yellow causeways there, uh, seems to run the entire length of the riverside and 
think that's critical to the overall success of the project. Uh, obviously, the connections to the downtown and the riverfront, expanding the YMCA uh, is a really interesting perspective on redevelopment there. Um, having an arts and cultural center in the heart of the district uh, could bring great value. And this overall sense of connections has been as discussed by other groups as well, not just connections uh, physically and through transportation, but connections in a historical and cultural perspective as well. Uh, for improvements, <clears throat> I think that consolidation would be key. Um, speaking as a board member of the Russell Library, a public library could be a really excellent umbrella to capture many of the amenities we see here, like a youth center, like an arts and a cultural center, and uh, even open classrooms and outdoor classrooms as are discussed later on in the plan. Uh, beyond this, there's a really important comment from a gentleman named James representing the firefighters in 1073, talking about emergency response in this overall area and the project at large. I thought that was really important to highlight. Uh, our group seemed to mirror the opinions of others with respect to uh, pedestrian, uh, pedestrians moving across Route 9. The bridges really was uh, the preference from our group overall. However, I will say the boulevard aspect does reinforce a more global perspective on pedestrian safety and empowerment, which is that roads are not just for cars, they're for people as well. And I am pleased that the overall presentation and plan seems to uphold that value because that's overwhelmingly the opinion of folks in town, I would say. Uh, DOT coordination gonna be extraordinarily critical uh, for any success, certainly. Moving on to the Sumner Creek District. Some really interesting perspectives on this district from our group. The green space in the area is abundant and green space overall, as we've seen repeatedly from feedback and surveys through this group, as well as others, like the recent plan of conservation and development, green space is an extraordinary value to our community. And that's repeated over and over in the feedback we get in surveys and polls and others. Uh, some of the treatment of these buildings um, may be cause for concern, and that's something that should be discussed. Uh, ideas for the rail, as others have discussed, the importance of connectivity from a possible pedestrian perspective, um, having a little bit of understanding of regional perspective on this issue, uh, rail corridor being converted into bike trails um, for both recreation and in some, in some regions, some areas of the region, excuse me, uh, transportation would be key um, to get to work and other things as well, possibly. Um, but the other possibility there certainly is pedestrian rail. Um, much, much bigger stakeholders need to lead on that. Well, there was a good comment about summer camps and recreational space in that area being an uh, very helpful to parents and others. Um, something that some parents in the in town experience by having to go over the bridge to get to Ingersoll um, or other summer camp opportunities um, with respect to COVID over this past summer, that was a difficulty for many parents and utilizing this district for that would be uh, a good opportunity. Just want to mirror, um, or excuse me, echo the feedback of other groups on this district. Um, a lot of hard work in this presentation and from the team, uh, but I think it was, there's a perception of uh, uncertainty with regards to Hilltop. Um, coordination, coordination with the state and with CDH as to having success and in integration in this region um, for the people of town sounds like a massive challenge. Uh, there was a comment from a gentleman named Guy Russo in the chat in our group on this district that it probably is going to require some big thinking. And I think um, extrapolating that seems there needs to be big thinking in order to um, coordinate with the state and uh, others to make sure that we have uh, you know, possible influence over parts of that campus with regard to, I don't know, oversight, regulation, ownership even. 
a lot of big problems to solve there. And South End, our comments were uh, right to the point. The housing opportunities that could be had out of this district seem really incredible. And just on a real high level, thinking about this overall project, this is, I would say, the real moment in the presentation where I suddenly thought of Middletown as a town of 75,000 people, as possibly, don't be afraid of it, folks, 100,000 people that this is a potential 20, 30, 40 year development plan. Of course, there are things early on in this project, like the promenade, like incorporating green space, uh, like pathways, maybe some housing, maybe some economic development, which I hope again, comes in the ways of public investment uh, that can lead to significant economic development. But this district really shows how the riverfront can change how people see and perceive Middletown, especially with regard to housing. There are only two things in this district, and I think that's its greatest strength. It's people and it's green space. Those are the two primary things out of this district, and I think that's a huge element of its success. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who helped us uh, report out and, and recap. And we're right on time. That's uh, before we give the, the word to, to the mayor to, uh, to ask him to close us out. Just wanted to, to say, don't forget to keep in touch with, with the project uh, through the Main Street Market Gallery uh, or the project website. Uh, or here is a project email where you can uh, send your, your, your questions to us. Uh, but, but anyway, thank you so much. Uh, it was a delight to have this workshop. And now uh, to close uh, a few words from Mayor Florshane. Uh, great, thank you, Alan. I just want, I want to let everybody get back to their evening. So I'll be very brief. Just want to thank everyone for taking so much time out of your uh, out of your day to help us make sure that this project is the right project for Middletown. I feel um, even more confident now that we're on the right track. And I think that as we, especially as we head towards um, having to make some choices, some tough choices, some of some of which will be choice between two good things, others of which will be a choice between two compromises, um, you know, and and others, you know, as that as the choices get uh, harder, uh, more abundant, they get harder, and so um, your input is going to be critical for us on that. So thank you for joining. Looking forward to continuing uh, the work together, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you so much to everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Have a thank good night. You. Bye. Stay healthy Thank you. and safe. Thank you. Same. Good Thank night, you. everybody. Thank you Good all. Night. Stay warm. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>